I have had many paranormal experiences throughout my life. I'm a spiritual person and have always been interested in the supernatural. This particular experience took place when I was 13. My mom, dad, sister, and I had to move because of my dad's work. This time, we were bound for Florida. At first, things at our new house were great. Then, a few weeks later, things started to occur. Our belongings were being moved from one place to another, for example. Next, I heard whispers and other inexplicable sounds. My family began hearing things soon after, as well as all of us starting to see shadows around the home. We were frightened. Most of the time, I would be staying home alone with my sister. During that time, I would see shadows moving, kitchen items would fall or be thrown. My sister and I would hear whispers. Then one day, there was a smell. Whatever it was, it was disgusting, like something putrefied. We searched high and low for the origin of the odor, unable to discover the source anywhere. This continued for weeks, until Dad decided to talk to the landlord. The landlord told us that the home's previous owner had been killed in the house. Since then, a lot of people who stayed there reported strange experiences, including the smell. My dad was furious. Soon after, we moved into another house. I still think about that to this day, though. I can't help myself. Twenty-five years ago, I moved in with my cousin along with her roommate and co-worker, Jose. The house was an old cement block, three bedroom, one bath. It had a large, fenced-in yard where he kept his two very large German Shepherds. The house was in Claremel, Florida, in a crappy, packed, suburban neighborhood. Nothing special. Rent was cheap. The house was clean. Everyone worked. We pretty much kept to ourselves. We might see each other for a few minutes here and there, but that was about it. I lived there for around six months. This is the story of what caused me to move out. One random night on a weekend, we all happened to be off work at the same time. We decided to invite some friends over from the pool hall that we all frequented. Jose also invited over some people who they worked with at the pharmaceutical lab. In total, there were probably 20 people at the house. We played music and did what young people do. After it had gotten late, we found ourselves discussing the subject of the paranormal. We all shared ghost stories. My cousin and I come from a pretty spooky family, so we had some good ones. Everyone was really into the topic. Jose, however, was quiet throughout most of the conversation. He waited until it died down, and then he said, This house is haunted. My cousin and I shot each other a look, before proceeding to laugh because, yeah, sometimes Jose's 20-pound house cat would meow at the empty hallway, but other than that, there was nothing. He then told us that there was a presence, but that it mostly stayed in the shed in the backyard. He was referring to a tiny pink wooden shed that I had never even looked inside. He told us that he always kept the curtains closed in his bedrooms because his window faces the shed, and the door to the shed would not stay closed. He had jammed it shut a million times, but it would always pop right back open, and that creeped him out. He said he could tell when it was in the house because he would always wake up feeling depressed. Once he finished the story, he wasn't the only one who was creeped out. I didn't want to think that I lived with a presence, and I didn't like the idea that it was hurting my roommate. I was a tough chick in my own personal opinion and was like, screw that ghost, I'll shut that door and you won't have to keep your curtains closed anymore. 
I said this all because in my heart, I didn't really believe that anything was in the shed or the house. I believed that we were just messing around. So I told them all that I was going outside to inspect the shed and deal with the door. Everyone followed me, and while we were walking around to the outside of the house, Jose tried to discourage me by saying that it was a bad idea. That whatever was in there wanted that door open, and that I should just leave it alone. When we got outside, it was exactly what I had expected it to be. I looked inside and there was a busted lawnmower, some old paint buckets, rusty screens, and darkness. I looked around outside and found some rusty old shovels in a corner of the garage area. I took one of them over to the shed and kicked the back door into its frame. Next, I took the handle of the shovel and put it under the handle of the shed door. I shoved that into the ground. It was without a doubt secure. We all went back inside and talked some more. It was late, I want to say 1 a.m. by the time that everyone said their goodbyes. We let the dogs into the yard and locked the gate. We made sure that the front gate was secured so that they wouldn't get out. Then we straightened up the house. Eventually, we all made it to bed. Sometime around 6 in the morning, I woke up needing to pee. I opened my bedroom door. I was very sleepy. There was a weird sound as I opened the door that startled me. It was like fingernails scraping on something coarse. I opened the door all the way, and the shovel fell through the doorway and hit me. I can't even put into words how I felt in that moment. A small piece of dirt stayed behind on the floor. The shovel had been left there, placed standing against my bedroom door. I rushed through the house to the side door, which was locked, by the way, and then out into the backyard. The shed door was wide open. Suddenly I felt as though I couldn't breathe. I ran back into the house. Immediately I pounded on both Jose and my cousin's doors until they both woke up and emerged. I knew, absolutely knew, that none of them had been responsible for this. And based on their reactions when I told them what had happened, that suspicion was doubly confirmed. Jose literally began to weep. He begged me to tell him that I was lying, that I was just playing around for a laugh. He then begged my cousin to admit that she had done it. When neither of us would take responsibility, he went to the store and bought a bunch of religious candles, produced a rosary, and started trying to pray whatever it was away. Or pray for me for being so stupid. My Spanish wasn't even close enough to fluent to keep up with everything he was saying. My cousin, quite the opposite of Jose, was absolutely peeved. She really was ready to fight me. She was adamant that I was screwing around, pulling some kind of a prank. She called me a liar as well as a child. And that most of all, she didn't appreciate being woken up at the crack of dawn after a night of partying, only to be made a pawn in my little scheme. On my end, though, when I knew that neither of them had put the shovel against the door or reopened it, I was filled with pure terror. There was no way that someone else had gotten into that yard. They would have had to get past the dogs just to get to the shed. And then they would have had to get inside the locked house to put that shovel against my door. I didn't sleep there again without someone in the room with me. Every moment spent there after that night was beyond tense. We all just kind of stopped talking to each other. Jose and my cousin ended up in an awful argument and she moved out within a week. It took me another two weeks to find a place to live. Whenever I did, I never went back. I was in Florida for a high school marching band trip. This was three, maybe four years ago. We were marching in the Disney parade, so we got to go to all the theme parks, including Universal. One day, we were in Clearwater. 
myself, and three guys who were part of my group were hanging out on the beach, far away from everyone else. Suddenly, I heard a deep voice say the word, no. It wasn't a yell, it was nothing close to a volume level that would have made me look around. It felt like a thought that I'd have in my mind, yet it was very clear and very distinct. It shook me up for a second, but I didn't want to mention it to any of the other guys. After about a minute though, one of them asked, Did you guys hear that? Instantly I replied, The no? It turned out that everyone had heard the exact same no in the exact same distinct male voice. Again, the nearest people were 60 feet away, and it was a mom and her kid, not a man, to begin with. We were on a beach, and it wasn't a yell, so the sound wouldn't have been able to travel that far. As a sound engineer, I can confidently say that a man, even with a deep voice, would have been unable to make a soft no loud enough to be heard from that distance. Nothing else happened. So, while it may not be the most interesting or terrifying of stories, it made me go from being a skeptic to a believer.